NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt is brought to you by Progressive, where drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. Plus, auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts. Quote now at Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who save with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Breaking news tonight, the chaos at the Capitol. Republican Kevin McCarthy ousted as House Speaker by members of his own party. McCarthy now the first speaker in history to be voted out. The showdown on the floor. The vote forced by Matt Gates, part of a small band of GOP hardliners, angry with McCarthy for cutting a deal to avert a shutdown. With a slim majority, McCarthy needed Democrats' help to survive, but none coming to his rescue. So what happens now? Our team at the Capitol. Also tonight, the suspect arrested after a kidnapped nine-year-old was found alive. Police saying she was abducted while riding her bike at a New York campground. The clue that led police to her. The deadly pileup shutting down a highway in Arkansas. Was it caused by a massive fire burning nearby? Former President Donald Trump back in court for his fraud trial. The major ruling why the judge has imposed a gag order on him. And will he testify? Hunter Biden pleading not guilty to federal gun charges, why his attorney is lashing out at Donald Trump. The congressman carjacked at gunpoint in Washington. The search tonight for three suspects. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome. Breaking tonight, Kevin McCarthy's short and rocky run as Speaker of the House of Representatives has come to an end. The California Republican, who until a few hours ago was second in line to the presidency, was voted out of the speakership this afternoon, nine months after he was elected to the job. His ouster came after key members of the narrow Republican majority he presided over turned on him in a dramatic statement of no confidence. The final vote, 216 to 210, with Democrats overwhelmingly joining dissatisfied Republicans in voting against him. The call for McCarthy's removal was instigated by Congressman Matt Gaetz just days after McCarthy made a deal with Democrats to keep the government open without deep spending cuts some Republicans wanted. Garrett Hake has been watching it all for us and has the latest. Tonight, after an historic vote in the U.S. House, now former Speaker Kevin McCarthy returning to an office that is no longer his. I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for Speaker again. The office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Acting on a motion by Florida Republican Matt Gates, eight Republicans joining with Democrats in voting to vacate the position of Speaker for the first time ever, following an impassioned floor debate. It's disgusting. It's what's disgusting about Washington. It's selfish, bad for conservative policies, and bad for America. That's why I strongly support Speaker Kevin McCarthy. There's nothing selfish about wanting a Speaker of the House who tells the truth. North Carolina Republican Patrick McHenry taking over as temporary Speaker. The chair declares the House in recess subject to the call of the chair. Gates declaring victory. It's the benefit of this country that we have a better Speaker of the House than Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy couldn't keep his word. While McCarthy's allies heaped scorn on the Republican rebels for dividing the party. Matt Gates wants to wreak havoc and chaos within the Republican Party. Uh, And he's doing just that. And unfortunately, uh, the American people are uh, pawns in his narcissistic game of charades. The seed for Gates' challenge to McCarthy was planted in January, when the Florida firebrand was the last Republican holdout to oppose making McCarthy speaker, eventually switching his vote to present on the 15th ballot. After McCarthy worked with Democrats to temporarily delay a government shutdown this weekend, Gates vowed to try to remove him with McCarthy saying today. I think Matt has planned this all along. It didn't matter what we transpired. Projecting confidence even as he arrived for the vote. Look, I'm an optimist because I think there's no point of being anything else. The narrowly divided House left Democrats an opening. Would they intervene to save a leader many despise? I here that, that just nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. Nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. And why should we? After a two-hour meeting, the Democratic leader announcing they'd stay out of the GOP's civil war, but vote against McCarthy.
And Garrett joins me now. Garrett, what happens now? So what happens next? The House has to select a new speaker and soon. But members have been told there are no more votes this week, meaning any new speaker would come next week as House Republicans try to plot a path forward for their fractured party. Lester. Garrett Haig, thank you. Let me bring in Kristen Welker now, the moderator of Meet the Press. And Kristen, you've been talking with Republicans all day about the impact of all this. Lester, that's right. And these extraordinary events expose deep divisions. Republicans who were opposed to removing McCarthy tell us it really imperils their conservative agenda. Now, former President Trump posting, quote, why is it that Republicans are always fighting among themselves instead of Democrats, while former Vice President Pence called all of this chaos? Lester, big picture, our latest NBC News poll shows the GOP with big advantages on issues like the economy. And there's real concern among Republicans that events like today could really hurt their chances. In 2024, Lester. Kristen Welker, thanks. Now to the remarkable rescue of a nine-year-old girl who police say was abducted from her family while riding her bike. Kathy Park reports on how investigators were able to track down the suspect now charged with kidnapping. Tonight, nine-year-old Charlotte Senna back with loved ones after vanishing while riding her bike at an upstate New York park. In a statement, the family writing, we are thrilled that she is home and we understand that the outcome is not what every family gets. The major break coming after a two-day long search when authorities tracked down 46-year-old Craig Nelson Ross Jr. after a ransom note was left at Charlotte's home. The intent? To get money, according to the arraignment memo. A fingerprint was found that matched what was found on the ransom note. Authorities say that critical clue was linked to a 1999 DWI and allowed SWAT teams to move in on the suspect's camper, roughly 20 miles from where Charlotte was last seen. After some resistance, the suspect was taken into custody and immediately the little girl was found in a cabinet, covered. She was rescued and she knew she was being rescued. She knew that she was in safe hands. Was the suspect known to the family? It has not been determined that the suspect was known to the family. The suspect was arraigned overnight on a charge of first degree kidnapping. The governor of New York saying they're still looking into the possibility of connections to other cases. NBC News attempted to contact the suspect's attorney, but we haven't heard back. We're all just like so surprised. In the neighborhood where officials say Charlotte was found alive and unharmed, today crews seen gathering evidence and residents grateful for some closure after days on alert. Kathy, could the suspect face more charges? Lesser, that is certainly a possibility. The governor of New York saying that this is still an active investigation. The suspect is currently being held at the Saratoga County Jail behind me without bail. The next court appearance is set for October 17th. Lester. Kathy Park, thank you. We're following a highway disaster in northeast Arkansas tonight, a crash involving 15 vehicles. Two people are dead and first responders say thick smoke from a brush fire in a nearby field may have caused poor visibility. Here in New York, the judge in the civil fraud lawsuit against Donald Trump placed a gag order on the former president today. It followed a social media post showing a court clerk. Laura Jarrett has late details. Scam. Tonight, Donald Trump back in a Manhattan courtroom for the second day of the $250 million civil fraud lawsuit against him, revealing he plans to take the stand. Well, the appropriate time I will be. But it was his comments on social media that prompted a dramatic ruling from the judge after Mr. Trump posted a photo of the judge's law clerk posing with top Senate Democrat Chuck Schumer. The judge ordering the post on Truth Social removed, saying personal attacks on any member of my court staff are unacceptable. Consider this a gag order. The Republican frontrunner again going after the Democratic attorney general who brought the lawsuit. Judge Engoran has been given false and extremely misleading information about my net worth. Private company, nobody's supposed to know my net worth. A net worth the state says was deliberately inflated to get more favorable loan rates from lenders, while Mr. Trump's legal team says real estate valuations are subjective. Attorney General Letitia James also in the courtroom once again, her team calling Mr. Trump's longtime accountant to the witness stand, 
His firm preparing the disputed financial statements at the heart of the case, forced to admit today that he learned the Trump organization didn't provide the firm with all of the necessary records. As for that gag order on Mr. Trump, the judge saying he's willing to impose sanctions if necessary, Lester. All right, Laura, thank you. Also tonight, the president's son, Hunter Biden, pleading not guilty to federal gun charges at his arraignment in Delaware today. Ryan Noble is now with that story. Tonight, Hunter Biden back in a Delaware courthouse, the son of a sitting president now facing a criminal trial. Biden pleading not guilty to three felony gun charges for allegedly purchasing a handgun while being an active drug user and lying about it on a federal form. His attorney calling the charges the result of political pressure from President Trump and his MAGA allies to force the Justice Department to ignore the law and deviate from its policies in cases like this one. Special counsel David Weiss filing the charges after his controversial plea deal for the president's son, which would have resulted in no prison time, fell apart under a judge's scrutiny. Two IRS whistleblowers testified that there was political interference in the DOJ investigation of Hunter Biden, which Weiss denies. If convicted, Hunter Biden facing a sentence of as much as 25 years behind bars, although he's unlikely to serve that much time. And his looming legal problems come as House Republicans step up their impeachment inquiry, hoping to tie Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings to his father. Whether it was lunches, phone calls, White House meetings or official foreign trips, Hunter Biden cashed in by arranging access to Joe Biden, the family brand. A key GOP witness last week testifying there's not enough evidence for impeachment so far. The president has said he was not involved in his son's work. And Hunter Biden still faces tax charges that could be handed down by the end of the month in both California and Washington, D.C. Lester. Ryan Nobles tonight. Thank you. In 60 seconds, the big headline today on attempts to lower the price of some of the most popular prescriptions and a well-known congressman carjacked at gunpoint as Washington faces a surge in violent crime. Chief White House correspondent Kristen Welker joins me now. From across the nation. What is the number one issue for you? To the national stage. And I welcome you to the final 2020 presidential debate. When critical votes were counted. Still too close to call. And when power was held to account. Is abuse of power an impeachable offense? Kristen Welker met the moment. Now she joins Meet the Press as its new moderator. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sundays on NBC. Hey, I'm Savannah Sellers. And I'm Joe Fryer. Every weekday morning, start your day with the top headlines on Morning News Now. We cover the most important stories from across the country and around the world. And what matters to you closer to home, like the latest weather, your health, and how to protect your wallet. We hope you'll wake up with us on Morning News Now, weekdays at 7 a.m. Eastern on NBC News Now. Streaming free everywhere. We're back with a major step towards slashing prescription prices. The Biden administration announcing today that manufacturers have all agreed to new price negotiations with Medicare under a law passed last year. The first 10 drugs selected include widely used blood thinners, diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis medications. The new prices would not take effect until 2026. And authorities in Washington are searching for three armed suspects who carjacked a member of Congress last night as the nation's capital faces a surge in violent crime plaguing some other American cities. Here's Tom Costello. It happened less than a mile from the Capitol. Texas Democrat Henry Cuellar carjacked as he arrived at his D.C. apartment. I looked to the left, somebody had a gun. Uh, To the right, somebody had a gun. I had a third guy behind me. Uh, and uh, you got to stay calm. Police recovered Cuellar's car. They're still looking for three masked suspects thought to be teenagers. It's been a year of violence in the nation's capital. 753 carjackings, double last year's number. Overall violent crime up 39%. 216 homicides, more than all of last year, and on track to be the deadliest in 20 years. My son is dead. My son is dead. My son ain't do nothing to nobody. Yeah, I've been living here 31 years. This is the worst I've ever seen around here. While violent crime is flat or down in New York, Los Angeles, and Philly, it's up 8% in Atlanta. 
up 27% in Chicago, up 28% in Baltimore. Washington's acting police chief says her department is understaffed and stretched beyond capacity. The most pressing concern that I've heard from community members is the increase in robberies and carjackings and the fear that this creates. Representative Cuellar isn't the first member of Congress to be a D.C. crime victim. Minnesota Representative Angie Craig was assaulted at her D.C. apartment. A staff member for Senator Rand Paul survived a stabbing last March. Congress and President Biden this year blocked a D.C. council plan that would have increased penalties for some crimes but lowered them for others, including carjackings. Buster? Tom, thank you. Coming up, the political minefield in Texas schoolyards, politics, religion, and the students caught in the middle next. We're back now with our new NBC News Studios podcast. It's called Grapevine, and it examines the growing influence of politics and religion on schools throughout the lens of a North Texas town. Tonight, one of the co-hosts, Antonia Hilton, has a preview of her highly anticipated series. It's Anisha Menezes' senior year, but she spent less time celebrating making honor society or getting excited about college. I think we all just feel exhausted. We try Instead, to... she's often worried about politics in her North Texas school district of Grapevine, Colleyville. In my school, all I can see is people pitted against each other. Over the course of the last two years, school board candidates backed by conservative Christian activists in three local districts, Grapevine, Colleyville, Southlake, and Keller, have passed sweeping policies, restricting lessons on race, gender, and sexuality, the bathroom use of trans students, and removing hundreds of books. Parents weighing in. Teachers shouldn't be forced to use your freaking made-up fantasy pronouns. We're clouding their mind with these, these ideas of, of gender confusion. But students at all three districts told us they now worry the church is creeping into the state and their schools. How have you seen religion influence your schools? It's frustrating, strange, and hypocritical to see the In God We Trust signs being put up everywhere while at the same time books are being removed from our library shelves. On the first day of the Texas legislative session, pastor and North Texas Representative Nate Schatzlein led a prayer in the Texas Capitol. There's nothing more important that we could be doing than this right here, worshiping and praying in the middle of the Capitol. During the session, he voted to restrict drag performances and to hire religious chaplains as unlicensed mental health counselors in public schools. He canceled an on-camera interview but agreed to speak to NBC News for the new podcast, Grapevine. What we hear from LGBTQ children right now is that this slate of bills has made them feel less safe in their community. How do you square that reality with your Christian faith? I think Christianity is always rooted in truth. And our emotions are always going to tell us things. You know, what we have never done is encourage hatred towards that community. Do you believe in the fundamental separation of church and state? I believe that church and state in the Constitution, what was written about it was written to keep the state out of the church, not to keep the church out of the state. That sentiment drove award winning history teacher Amanda Guthrie away from public education for good. You made the decision to leave in the middle of the school year. I did. Why not stick it out a few more months? It felt unsafe. The people that work in that district are hardworking, caring people. But um, even they have no control over what the school board does or says. Leaders from all three districts declined to be interviewed. Grapevine Colleyville told NBC News, we review all feedback and continuously look at how we can better serve and support our employees. South Lake's Carroll School noted, as required by Texas law, we have policies and processes that respect parental rights and appropriately review curriculum. And Keller ISD saying, we believe that mutual respect and dignity build unity. In a time where the climate is so hostile. It's nice to be able to find solace in just friends you can talk to. They are proud that these battles have taught them how to find their voice. Antonia Hilton, NBC News, Grapevine, Texas. That's nightly news for this Tuesday. Thanks for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. 
Hi, everyone. I'm Jenna Bush Hager from Today with Hoda and Jenna and the Read with Jenna Book Club. There's nothing I love more than sharing my favorite reads with all of you, except maybe talking to the exceptional authors behind these stories. And that's what I'll be doing each week on my new podcast, Read with Jenna. I'll be introducing you to some of my favorite writers. These conversations will leave you feeling inspired and entertained. New episodes of Read with Jenna are released every Thursday. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts.